So what we're talking about is basically feeling like this at contact or pre-contact and then the hands doing this during contact. I'm feeling like you have very little control or pressure on the ball. Feeling you have no room at contact is a fear a lot of golfers will have. So they hate feeling kind of cooped up and trapped and early extending and flippy through the golf ball. Let's give you the best way to stop the early extension and feeling that trapped without actually working on early extension itself. I'm feeling like you have very little control or pressure on the ball. The hands are working over time. The right arm is stretching and reaching for that golf ball and trying to fish the ball into the air and trying to fish it straight rather than let it go to the right. If we work from that position backwards, why are we here? Generally it's because the plane's either started this way and then it's a recovery move, or it can be because we're standing up on the backswing and we haven't rotated enough. There's, there's many different little causes, and I would always recommend we work on the cause as well as the effect. And if you need to do that, obviously send your swing into me, take up a skillless lesson with me and we can look at that. But what I want to talk to you about today is the fix. So the best way to stop early extension is by getting your rib cage and hands to work correctly in the downswing. So when I swing down, when we get into this early extension position, these hands have never got low. All the best players in the world, from their address position, these hands in the delivery position will be one to two centimeters lower than what they started. That's been measured on 3D. So that's what we're aiming for. And if we imagine, we were going to overdo that and Justin Rose is the example I always use for this for his practice swings. He gets his hands in his practice swings halfway down his shins here and then turns and extends through the golf ball. Those are the feels he tries to have when he's practicing these moves. Now if I get my hands that low, my bum, my tailbone, my pelvis has to stay where it is. If I early extend from there, I can't get my hands low. Hands going down low creates more vertical force, hand force reaction. If my rib cage goes down that trail kind of quad and thigh, what that does again is makes me hip hinge. And if I'm hip hinging correctly, there's no chance of early extension. So that's kind of what we're after. Now you might say to me, if we're getting our hands that low and we're hinging that much, how do we rotate? Well, the rotation follows. The ideal will be top of the backswing, obviously our hips are rotated, our thorax is rotated. When we move down to this position, there's a slight recentering for sure. So the hips want to be moving laterally and they will rotate a tiny bit. But certainly I would want you never consciously to try and rotate the hips at this position. If we get too eager with the hips, the right hip tends to get high, the le right leg tends to get forward and longer, extended and gets in the way. And what we want to really focus on is, can I get my hands down close to the floor and then from there as we've got lower the ground will start to push me back up but I'll also share with you in a minute a little foot exercise so you can start to feel the sensation of pushing back up. So the key things are we're working down first and then pushing back up secondly. So those are the two moves we're really after. Can we go down and then go up and if went, by going down we create space between the trail arm and our hip and ideally what we want is this trail arm and elbow to be in front of that hip, that thigh. So let's first of all hit one trying to go super low. I definitely over exaggerated that or felt like I did and it felt like it was harder to get back up for sure and that's what you'll feel but certainly in practice that's great. Overdo these things let the ground start pushing us back up more naturally and then take our nat that, that into our natural swing. Let's share with you how we can push off the ground a bit better. So this drill I got from a guy called Marcus Bell, I don't know him personally, saw it online uh, and I really liked it, so credit to him. The idea in this one is if you take your setup position as normal and turn this left foot in, lead foot in, as you swing down, particularly if you swing down fast, you feel like here you get a bit kind of stuck and locked. So what we want to do from there now is feel we push off our toe and we push into our heel and we spin this way. And don't be scared to let your foot move and get some air in it. 
that's 100% the moon we've got to feel if we're feeling that we're screwing off the ground like this. And I love that rotation. And quite often I talk about trying not to rotate in the downswing because people tend to do it too early and don't move lateral enough and don't let the club move down with gravity. But we have to push off the ground. So this would be, okay, we've gone low. We're here, foot's in there. Then from there, okay, if I'm gonna hit it hard, push off that toe into the heel and move out the way. So what I'd recommend initially is you probably do that with just practice swings and think, okay, how did that feel? And then you go ahead and try and put that into a swing where you try and think, okay, how does my feet feel now? I'm trying to go low and then push up. I definitely felt my body work more this way. And it's definitely something I need more of in my golf swing. It'll help me take divots. My radius tends to be a little high. My right arm tends to be a little straight than I want. As I've talked about in my other videos, keeping this trail arm bent and keeping the trail wrist bent back whilst we're moving through impact is the holy grail for me. If you do those two things, it's very difficult to do anything too wrong with the golf ball. If you do both of them, it's pretty hard to hit the ball left unless you've got a funky grip or something else going on in the golf swing. But it'll definitely make you feel that pressure. And it's almost like I always talk about this. Imagine if we're in the swimming pool and I was trying to splash that water down the fairway. That's how the trail wrist should feel. Give it a go. If you want to fix your early extension and get great pressure on the golf ball.